Why, hello there, guess who it is? It is I, Anxious Cynic, back for another Minimator video. Who would have thought? But today, this very day, Minimator 2, full release, just dropped. So I figured we'll take a little dive into exploring the interface and some of the new features. So as you can tell on your screen here, this is what you're greeted with when you first open Minimator 2. There's a simple mode in advanced mode and you have to unlock it by upgrading my animator which is free but you can choose to donate so let's go ahead and click continue make a new project it's gonna be uh what's a good name my animator too okay whoo that was close i was getting a little nervous there <laughs> So first things first, we don't want to be playing around with simple mode. As you can see right there, it says simple mode enabled. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And then that brings up this little splash here. I already have a code. I have my upgrade code from years ago when I donated. But let's just go ahead and go through the steps if you haven't done this already. So when you click that link, it's going to take you to this page. And you have these two boxes. I'd like to donate. I'd like to not donate. Uh, and then you can just get a key for free. I'd recommend donating. They put a lot of work into this, but if you can't afford it, you know, no harm. Just, you know, tick the appropriate box and be on your way. We are currently in simple mode enabling. Advanced mode unlocks more features, so we're going to enable. And there we go. That's taken care of. Now we can access all the stuff that we need to uh, render settings, etc. We've got custom there, so we can go through and change a bunch of these features here that I'm not interested in deep diving into just yet. But uh, we got the typical stuff. If you used Minimator before, then you know. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just do a couple of couple of these maneuvers right here. Put the tempo on 30 because typically I'm rendering at 30 frames per second. We got our usual features here. We got the library. We got the environment tab. Let's just drag this out here. Our time of day, of course. Right click reset most of that stuff is relatively unchanged if you've used my before then you know all about that stuff then we got our workbench here we got our inventory for items characters etc character parts custom model uh, you can use model bench to bring those in that's pretty good stuff right there we can bring in items scenery individual blocks special blocks that would be you know have animated elements to them we can bring in custom shapes cubes cone cylinder surface sphere text items paths this is very exciting and cameras particle spawners light sources audio tracks and environment timelines so that you can animate the time of day etc in your animation in one project so we're just going to go ahead and bring in our typical Steve character we can make a slim model or the wide model we're going to create and we've got this new feature here where you can just kind of move things around in the 3d space on two different axes at the same time unlike with the previous versions of Minimator where you only had like your single axis movements so that's really cool we got the nice little uh, updated character model with the 3D elements there. One thing you may notice here is that back faces are disabled by default. So I'm just gonna click on the Steve root character there. I'm gonna go to his properties and go to appearance and turn show back faces on. And then that way we don't get that kind of annoying look there to the dis disappearing dis invisible back faces. Oh yeah, before we go any further with that, I'm gonna go up here to edit. Well, yeah, edit and then preferences. And you'll see what that does is bring up this preferences tab over here. We got our program settings. You can see that we're set to advance. And I'm just going to change a couple of things here. Copy work camera into new cameras. I don't want to do that. I want the cameras to always just spawn at zero. You have unlimited values here. I don't currently have any use for that, so I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to go to interface and I might want to do dark or darker darker is a bit much i'm just gonna go with dark i think that's a little bit easier on the eyes sorry about subjecting you to the uh, other look for so long uh, what about this what color do we want uh, i'm gonna go with yellow then we have compact panels i personally like that it kind of just shrinks everything together i'm on a laptop and using one monitor for the most part uh so you know it helps to kind of just keep things neat and tidy and i can see more on one screen we can also do the same for compact timeline list you'll see that shrinks this down here i'll 
show you there. Boop, 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 boop. I actually kind of like the little graphics that it has, but oh well, I'll do that for now. Z is up. I always like that because I like my Z to be up. We have separate tool modes. So if you notice here, when I click on Steve, then you'll see we have this and these, and this allows you to move them around on you know multiple axes at one time or in different ways more fluid uh, motion rather than just how it used to be with that and we have these options over here for how we select those so if i turn on separate tools then you'll see that we can select just the move tool just the rotation tool scaling tool etc and one thing i like to do is have my slow modifier be a little bit slower i put it at 0.15 that way when i am holding the shift key it moves just a bit slower. I find that it being a little bit slower helps me to maneuver around the workspace the way I like. Also, if you're unfamiliar, I am holding right click in the view space and I can use my mouse to look around like a first person shooter. WASD moves around, holding shift makes you go slower and I think space makes you go faster. Boom, zooming around. You can't really get much reference there for how different it's moving because there's nothing in the scene but you know all right so now that we've got our preferences set up the way I like it let's go ahead and take a look at our other tools here so if I click on Steve his head and I can click on the move tool there rotation and that makes it so that those two are enabled and we see them at the same time which is you know can be helpful. So you may notice when I click on the arm though, it just goes into just having rotation because typically, you know, you're just rotating limbs. You're not actually moving them away from the body. But if we just click on the move tool again, those features will be there yet again. I come over here, right click and reset the value or reset all values. And one thing you may notice here is that we would typically be able to bend arms. We don't have the bend tool enabled. So if I click that, then we get this nice little light blue circle there and we can bend the arm. We have the nice sharp bends enabled. Uh, looks pretty good, pretty Minecrafty if I do say so myself. But you may also notice down here we have some new options. We have our keyframe settings. This is where we can select our keyframe transitions. We can turn the object visible or invisible, but we also now have this materials tab where we have our color options, which was always a thing, but now it's down here in this neat and tidy section. And we have a couple of other options, surface properties. We have roughness, metallic, emissive. Oh, what do these do? What do these do? And then we have these buttons up here just so we can kind of touch on that. We got our snapping. We've got our aspect ratio. This would make it so that your screen here shows how the camera would see it. And we have our grid overlay for our rule of thirds uh, grid options. We have particles, so we can enable or disable them in order to get better performance with particles in our scene. Flat mode means no lighting. Shaded mode shows a little bit of lighting and rendered is gonna show us the actual final render quality of our scene with shadows and everything else and you will get some performance issues and you can see down here on the bottom left it shows how many samples we're rendering and the frame rate of our screen here with that enabled we should be able to adjust some options here get rid of the roughness you can see that steve's arm is looking a little bit reflective isn't that interesting let's turn metallic up metallic is making him reflect all the ambient light in the scene, it would seem. Uh, emissive is gonna make it very bright, like he's uh, not absorbing light at all, or maybe he's absorbing all the light, I don't know. Then next you have subsurface options. I haven't uh, messed with this too much, so I'm not exactly sure how it works. Maybe that'll be for a later video, if I continue to make some more crap The next we have constraints, and this one's pretty god dang exciting, man. So we have follow path. If you recall over here, we have the uh, path option, so we can actually make objects, characters, etc. follow a path. So animating some kind of kooky run where he's running in circles or whatever 
isn't uh, nearly as difficult as it would have been before. We can make roller coasters and things like that and animate them way easier. And then also pretty dang exciting is inverse kinematics. So if you're familiar with Blender or any of that kind of stuff, then you've probably heard of inverse kinematics and people have wanted that in my animator for quite a while. So we can select a target, uh, which typically you would want to create another object for. You can make an angle target, which would make it so that I'm pretty sure uh, the elbow, say, would face a certain target. And then you would have your target for your actual arm so that you can maintain the rotation properly. Maybe we'll do a video specifically on that if you guys want it. Uh, also, let me know if you guys you know, want specific videos about any features in this. Let me know and I will try my best to follow up with specific videos covering specific topics. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already as well. So another new feature here is actually being able to use like math commands in your your, your number values so let's just say on the y for whatever reason we wanted this to be 20 degrees rather than typing 20 which would be easy but i can do 10 times to enter and that will make it 20. so if you have you know for some reason numbers that you need to add up or whatever and you don't want to do the math in your head then you can actually just do the math right there in the box. Another new cool feature, if you recall me uh, mentioning how I work on a laptop and typically use one screen, well, I actually do have a second screen, and before, that did no good for me in my animator, but now, okay, now, you may notice this little button down here on the timeline. If I click this, bada bing, bada boom, the timeline is its own window, and you won't be able to see this, but I can actually drag this over onto my other screen. And now I have all this space to play with here. And I believe, let's go ahead and bring in a camera. This window as well has the same options. You'll see that looks kind of weird because it's spawned down in there. There we go. Yep, yep, yep. Hang on. Hang on. I'm a bit rusty. A little bit rusty. There we go. <laughs> Okay, that was a bit overdone, but anyway, this has the same button, click that, and now my camera view is also separate, and I can bring that onto another monitor so that I don't have all these little screens cluttering up my screen. So I can click this, pop that back down there, uh, let's go ahead and click it on the other one and bring that back over there, and then now we're back at the traditional Minimator screen. So, boom, that's awesome. One little issue you may have noticed is uh, when I click on transitions, they're kind of going off the screen, and this is because I have the compact, compact panels option enabled. If I turn that off, then this actually works better, so you may just want to leave that off, I don't know. But we also now have this Bezier, Bezier, how do you say it? Transition option, and that actually gives us a graph to make custom transition curves. So if I just take this like this, and do that, and let's just, uh, it? No, I don't want to do that. We'll just bring it down here like that. So, there's our transition. We also have these new buttons on the timeline where you can skip between keyframes. You can go back and forward. Singular frames. All good stuff. So, that's our transition. And I can actually come over here and grab this little handle here. And you'll see that I'm adjusting that curve and that changes the way the arm moves. So that's very cool and a lot more control over your animations. Whoop. Yeah, that'll be fun to play with. All right, so that's all the time I've got for this video. Uh, there's other things we can cover, but I figured I would let you guys tell me if there's anything in particular you want covered and we'll do some, you know, just kind of highlight videos on those particular subjects. So uh, yeah, be sure to let me know if there's anything you want covered specifically. There's a number of things like rendering has a lot more stuff that we can go into, etc. So uh, just be sure to shout out in the comments anything you want me to take a look at. And I will do my best to do some kind of uh, dumb overview of that feature that someone else more knowledgeable could probably cover more effectively. But hey, I'll do it anyway because I don't care. Anyway, thanks for watching. I guess I'll see you in the next one.